Hello everyone, it's Monday and we are back with another episode of ITS Laboratories Pickup Blog and we'll continue the um, line um, about mass timber today, but we'll talk about it from the perspective of people who handle it on site. So here with me today, John Goldsworthy. Uh, John is a, an operations manager uh, um, in built environs, and he has 35 plus years of work, uh, uh, working experience in construction, where he started as a carpentry apprentice and worked his way through to be a recognized and respected industry leader. So John is an active uh, member of New Zealand Institute of Building and uh, Prefab New Zealand, John has been involved in uh, various working group, uh, groups on uh, mass timber applications, uh, modular construction, prefabrications. Uh, John is always keen to challenge accepted um, construction methodology and um, push forward uh, with uh, uh, new and innovative um, approaches and solutions. So most recently, John has been involved into the um, project, uh, construction and delivery of this project, which is the, the highest New Zealand mass timber building Auckland City Mission. So uh, thank you for joining me today, today John. All right, thanks Anna, thanks for having me. So my first question is around Auckland City Mission um, project of yours. So uh, I'm sure you've been uh, handling lots of projects and I'm sure also that each and every project is special in its own way. So Auckland City Mission, why it's special uh, and what memories will you keep about this project later on? Yeah, look, it's, it's um, really interesting that this building is absolutely like nothing I've sort of been involved with uh, in the past. You know, I've got a lot of fond memories of a lot of buildings we've delivered, but this is particularly bespoke and unique, sort of both in its functionality, its end functionality and its construction techniques. Um, you know, I know we're here to talk about mass timber and, and, you know, mass timber has played a big part in this project. The lower levels on this building are more traditional concrete and steel structure, but then from um, it transitions then into mass timber, which goes right up to the um, right up to level nine. So as you said, it's the tallest building, mass timber building in the country. Um, but then there's a lot of other real bespoke, really sort of um, unique elements to it. Um, there's a lot of transfer structure through it. There's a real big feature on the um, structural steel die grid on the outside. But look, very unique, very bespoke, and look, the client. Um, very unique client as well, so it's a, it's a project that ticks an awful lot of boxes and one that'll be you know that'll you know think back very fondly of. Yeah, uh, sounds like it was a real challenge, and I guess uh, you were pushing with your um, innovative uh, approach and uh, a lot of probably new ideas as well, right? Yeah, look, this project is full of building innovation, and I think it's um, it's not just the tallest mass building. I think it's going to breaking a lot of ground and actually providing a lot of um, opportunity for mass timber to launch from. So the innovation side of it has been endless, really. Um, there's a lot of stuff, and I suppose we'll talk about this a wee bit later on in the innovation side of things, but it has provided a, a huge platform for, for mass timber in the New Zealand industry. Perfect. So if we talk about advantages of and disadvantages of conventional building materials like concrete and steel and compare it with mass timber, so, um, so what are those pros and cons from the perspective of the constructor? Yeah, sure. Look, that, that's a really great question and one that we could spend an awful lot of time talking about. Um, look, there's a lot of publications out there that'll tell you the benefits of mass timber. And if you haven't read them, I'm sure the mass timber suppliers will be more than happy to tell you about them. But certainly from a from a uh, constructor's point of view, before we talk about the actual product itself, you know, the process itself is a, is a huge advantage. For me, um, you know, I'm a real advocate for, for design for manufacture and assembly for DFMA. So the process itself actually forces a DM, DFMA process. So it brings the process to the fore. So effectively you are building, you have to build this building in the virtual world long before the first panel is cut. So from a constructor's view, having that level of detail before you've even on site is a, is a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's aware of the environmental um, advantages and aspects of, of, um, of mass timber and that's carbon sort of properties and all the rest of it. So I don't think I'll go too much in that. But talking about the product itself, you know, the, the product, um, it, 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 by virtue of its own panelization, it's a very um, robust, it's very accurate, and it's a very stable product from, uh, from the onset. So it's a very easy product to use. Um, 
the significant environmental uh, work environment uh, benefits, whereas you know you don't have the noise of of standard concrete and steel construction. You know, there's no uh, there's no grinding, drilling, there's no welding. You know, so it's a very um, quiet, very um, um, sort of inert sort of environment. Environment. In fact, sometimes you go around the site and you think the site was deserted because there's very little noise. It's, you know, you can walk around the site without having to worry about your earmuffs and, and all the rest of it. You can have a conversation and you wonder where all the guys are, but everything is nice and quiet. Um, I suppose it also offers, because it's a panelised product, um, it offers an immediate access to a work face. So by that, I mean, once the walls are up and the floors are on, the following trades can actually start immediately. There's no back propping, you know, which we'd have in traditional build, which is there and, you know, and reliant on curing times and all the rest of it. So it just offers um, you know, a lot of significant program advantage from, uh, from that respect as well. Um, logistics is another huge advantage that we've really noticed. Um, you know, the logistics of working on a, on a construction site in the central city are, are, are extremely important. But the, you know, the truck, um, truck movements are minimized because you're only bringing in one product. You know, your crane operations are optimized because that crane is dedicated to that product. So that's a significant advantage. And then, um, and just your delivery scheduling um, is just so much easier. Um, so, you know, there's just, I could talk about the advantages of it for, for days. And I suppose one that's really sort of prudent to talk about is the safety and design elements as well, because you're only limited by your imagination really. Um, and on the, on this project in particular, the guys put a lot of thought into um, safety and safety and design. So they they um, designed in safety barriers into the panelization as well. So when a panel turned up, if for example, it had a large opening in it, they designed in that the mid rails and handrails would all be sort of left into that panel and then removed later. So, you know, safety and design aspects can really be incorporated. So look, the, the list just goes on. Um, from a from a, a disadvantage perspective, look, for me, the only disadvantage in the product is it's new to market. And as an industry, we're pretty slow on the uptake sometimes, and there's a lot of trepidation from, from you know, some, I suppose, some fields. So I think the only disadvantage there is that it's new to market. No one wants to be a guinea pig, but we've, break, we've broken a lot of ground on, on, uh, on the city mission project. Um, and I think market just has to be a bit broader in its view and, and open to innovation and open to looking at these, um, at the challenges of mass timber and working around solutions. So. Perfect. Thank you, John. That was a really uh, deep and uh, a really extensive coverage of this question. So we'll come to the last uh, uh, question. Um, which is around uh, the compliance of mass timber. So what are the lessons learned and what are the areas most critical around the compliance uh, of mass timber? Yeah, again, good question, Anna. And I think it's one that most of um, every design discipline would probably answer differently. Um, but if I, I think from my perspective, and I'll come to direct to compliance in a, in a roundabout way, but I think from my perspective, um, you know, the most important thing is to understand the product you're using um, and that the codes that are more commonly known or recognised by constructors and, ad and adhered to aren't necessarily transferable into mass timber. So I think you need to understand the product, understand its limitations and understand its strengths. So I, I think that's a really, really important platform to start from. Um, you know, I think there's been numerous examples over the years where, where a job has been designed in a traditional steel and concrete method and it's been tried to then convert to mass timber and it, and it doesn't work at that point. You have to commit to mass timber from the beginning and design to that. Um, one of the other things I think is, um, is not commonly recognised in mass timber is there, is there is a significant range of products within the mass timber suite. As, as I call it anyway. Um, so you're not actually um, governed by one product alone. So how I've explained it in the past is I like to go into the mass timber suite and pick products for its strengths um, and mix those products to create systems. And for me, that's where the magic happens. So, you know, to explain that a little bit more, if you were to take a product that was particularly stable in its vertical application, um, as a CLT, you know, you'd use that in, in like a wall application. There, there may be another product that outperforms that in a horizontal um, application, so you'd use that for floors. So you don't have to stick with one product. So, you know, for me, the market understanding that will also help the compliance issues and all the rest of it. 
Um, we quite often talk about constructors and designers understanding um, mass timber, but another important aspect I think is the actual, the signing off authorities, the local territorial authorities also have to understand the product um, for it to be accepted more widely. And, and again, you know, there's this uh, notion that we have the New Zealand building code and we revert to steel and concrete and those codes are, aren't always applicable. So I, I think there has to be some more industry sort of um, information sharing to really get the, um, the product information out there. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the real key learnings on Auckland City Mission was um, around some of the compliance issues. We typically go to um, structure and acoustic and fire, and there's good solutions around those now. And a lot of those are actually off the shelf solutions. So for example, for example sort of fixings, brackets, um, those sorts of things where we would typically have to design those bespokely. There's no need for that now. There's such an array of tested, certified, compliant products out there and you just got to know about them and know where to look and I think that sort of comes to a point around about um, where the market has grown from my observation I think the actual mass timber product suppliers now are able to support their product far more technically than they were even say five years ago okay. so I think we have to lean on those guys to really sort of you know help us through this to get this product you know seen as a more um, a readily available and equitable sort of option so yeah it's sort of you know, some of the stuff around about the compliance, I guess, and nature of it. Uh, listen, John, from the perspective of fire testing, because it, it's quite critical, right? Mass timber to the fire, because it's in a way adds to the fire load. So you are as a, a team member of the, um, you know, construction site. So would you need any guidance on that? Uh, do you think that it would be of use for you guys to get some of the educational uh, trainings for, for example, for fire testing or any kind of testing or any kind of uh, 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 knowledge uh, about mass timber and around mass timber. So do you think it can be of use to you? Look, absolutely. And, and um, I should have actually gone into fire a little bit more into the compliance issue because, because, because of course, that's everyone's go-to point. They think mass timber, timber burns, it's just a, you know, it's just a far way to happen, but it's just not the case. And, you know, and that comes down to mis uh, industry misconception. And for myself, I'm probably one of the biggest learnings on this project has been about the fire. So mm -hmm. as, a, as a constructor, I've always looked at fire and fire rating. Um, this, is, this is a different way of looking at the fire code. This is around about encapsulation and isolation and fuel load. And honestly, two years ago, I didn't, you know, I had no idea of how to, how to view this. So the education part is so significant. Um, I just don't think that can be downplayed. And this is where, and I know, Anna, we've worked together before um, at your laboratory, looking at intermittent coatings and things like that, looking for innovative solutions to the, you know, to overcovering of boarding and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, although we weren't able to um, apply that to the to this project because of the timing of it, you know, that's where the future lies. Um, and I think, you know, education, innovation and support from the likes of, of Fire Lab and the um, you know, instruments and coding suppliers and things like that is, you know, we'll, once, we, once we get that bottomed out, we'll really see this product take off. Good, perfect. So um, I think this is something probably we need to think about at a fire test laboratory, yeah? So to support the industry from this perspective as well. Thank you so much for, uh, for your input today and uh, we'll conclude here and um, uh, goodbye, John. No, thanks, Anna. Thanks for the opportunity and um, really good. Thank you.